Hey, my name is Alan Simpson, and this is a quick video on making responsive lists with CSS3. By responsive, I mean it takes advantage of whatever screen width is available. So if it's real wide, there might be four columns, a little less wide, maybe three columns, a little less width, two columns, on down to eventually phone width where there's only one column. But anyway, you slice it, you're taking advantage of whatever screen width is available, minimizing the scroll down. So that on a wide screen, then they don't have to scroll down at all because it's taking advantage of the width, depending on how many items are in the list. Now that list is a little complicated because it has fun, awesome markers and links and stuff. So to focus on the responsive part, we'll just work with a very simple list. It's a very simple page with the usual tags and one UL list with some dummy text from Cupcake Ipsum in there as list items. Okay, so if we look at this in the browser, it's just a plain old everyday, unformatted, bulleted list in the browser. Let me just switch to a simpler font so it's a little easier to see in this video. I think it'll be easier if I go with a different font. Um, this has nothing to do with the responsive part. You can use any font, any font size you want for the, as far as that goes. Okay, I'll size things up. Eh, not much difference. Oh, well, let's talk about making it responsive now. Responsive means it goes to multiple columns on wider screens. So, uh, we'll make up a style class, so this doesn't apply to every ULS. We'll just say class equal. You can make up any name you want here. I'll use responsive. You could call it wingnut or goober or whatever you want. doesn't matter so long as the class name matches in the style rule preceded by a dot. All right, now to make it responsive, all I have to do is put in one line, say column hyphen width, and pick a width. I'll just guess and say 200 pixels. When I refresh, it automatically breaks into two columns where each one is 200 pixels wide. It's not perfect. I lost my bullets, and it wraps kind of funny. But it's a start, but it, and it is just one line of code, so you can't complain. To get my bullets back, I'll use column hyphen gap, and I don't know, maybe 36 pixels for a gap in between the columns. That should be enough room for the bullets to show. All right, and that worked. Okay, so now I've got my whole responsive effect with my bullets. It's wrapping a little, you know, that's probably... A little too narrow for this text. I might want to go with 400 pixels wide. Well, now, well, that it's better in the sense that it doesn't wrap, but it, uh, you know, that columns look too wide. Oh yeah, that, so I'm somewhere in between 200 and 300, I need. You can just go ahead and play around with it like that until you find something you like, or if you have a screen ruler, you know, you can pop open your ruler and. Just take a quick measure, see if you can figure out which is the widest one. That's like 340, 320, 340. Just eyeball it, you know, 338. So let's say, okay, that one's like 350. But I do have that 36 in there. So let's try a width of like uh, 360. That's better. It's actually still a little too wide, I think. But anyway, like I said, you can just play around with it, too. Really, whatever works for you is fine. Uh, I might go with 320. I don't know. But that's all there is to it. Just play around with it from there on, and you'll eventually find something that you like. Now, as far as the font awesome and some of the other stuff at the beginning of the video goes, um, I do have videos on that, and there's a link in the description of this that'll take you to other links if you want to check that out. But as far as making a simple responsive list goes, you just need a style rule with two CSS properties. Obviously, you can make it way more complicated if you want, but if you're just looking for a quick, elegant solution, this will do it. All right? Thanks for watching. Hope to see you around the net. Bye-bye now.